Are you going to buy dinner tonight? Uh, but it, uh, Is that the idea? Are you going to buy dinner tonight? I thought you had to invite me for dinner. <laughs> I thought that... I didn't get the idea. OK. Martin Pa, Nishulman, nice to have you here in Vevey. Um, because we are here in a festival that celebrates photography, my very first question would be quite simple. How was your introduction to Im images? Because we are here in celebrating images. So was it maybe Martin, was it as a child or does it came later? Just images, what was, you know, uh, well, I, you I enter guess, into this world? I guess uh, my first input was really from my grandfather, who was a very keen photographer. So I used to visit him. He lived in Yorkshire. I lived in the south of England. And uh, when I visited him, he showed me his own work. And he was part of a, a bromoil circle within the Royal Photographic Society. So he had images posted onto him, which he had to comment on and then send them on to the, uh, the next person. So he, he was the person that sort of gave me a camera. We went out shooting, processed the film, made print. So I think uh, the photography bug was introduced to me by him. And that was when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. So it was not family pictures? It not was, really, no, no. It but was I think the first sorry. picture I took was my father on a frozen stream, maybe when I was eight or nine, something like this. But it's seeing the grand, my grandfather's prints that really t made it take off. Do you still have these images somewhere in a box? Yes, I do, actually, because he's dead now. And, um, you know, I have a, a, maybe a selection of 50 of his images in our collection. Mm -hmm. They're very pictorial because he did this thing called bromoil, which is by nature oh, pictorial because it's where you ink out the image and, and re-put it in with brushes. So you can control the, the tones of the pictures, you know, a bit like Photoshop, but done with ink and brush. So it was proper photography, like art photography. Yeah, pictorial, pictorial. classic pictorial photography from Camera Club. So Lee, what about you? How was your introduction well, to my, images? Mine was family, because I think my, my father was like a, a photo buff and he used to buy any new camera that was on the... So I, remember, I think I, for me, it was having slide projections, uh, which he used to love, uh, mm. which I think, you know, it's, it, I remember kind of being quite embarrassed about him showing all off, inviting the, the sort of neighbours and friends to watch us, sort of, you know. Like a celebration. Yeah, a celebration. I wasn't <laughs> so keen on that. But it was an amazing moment uh, for me. And then he kind of went into Polaroids, and Polaroids were something, that, and I still have a big collection of Polaroid cameras, which I love, and I was completely uh, besotted by Polaroid. I thought it was just like magic uh, when, when Polaroid happened. But I actually um, quickly actually went into filmmaking, because when VHS camcorders came out, um, I fell in love with filmmaking, which is what I became as a filmmaker. Images. Moving images became, uh, it was really that kind of, it happened to me and w with my friends we used to grab VHS camcorders and make short films, mostly horror, I remember us making horror films. <laughs> we tried to make little Whoa. horror films and little kind of short uh -huh. films and we, were, we, were, and we could plug them in, we could plug the camera into the television and, and watch them back. So it was definitely, I went to moving images very quickly and which came, became kind of my, but I do remember, I do have a really uh, strong memory of, of my father kind of being a total geek in terms of having to have the newest camera and the new, and things were changing all the time because we went from slides to Polaroids and I still have so a camera. So the equipment was changing. Yeah, and it was a different ways. And there was a, a really interesting thing. Uh, there was a Kodak camera uh, which had a, re a circular uh, film I don't know if you remember. Disc camera. A disc camera. So it was yeah. a Kodak Disc 2000, which I got when I was 13, and I mm -hmm. thought it was these kind of, it, and I thought it was amazing. So um, my first really, but it really came from my father. We are here in Vevey where we celebrate photography, but also a photography that is accessible to everyone. You know, usually when you enter into a museum, you de it's a decision. You go into a museum, you buy your ticket, uh, you are protected, you know, by these galleries, the walls. It's a separate room, and here everything is accessible, it's free, it's in the street. We have visitors that they, they come for photography, but there are many people who are just walking in the street. So what is your experience is looking at these images in the street and looking at people who are around and surrounded by this art photography, not advertising photography, but you know, here it's another kind of photography we have in the streets or outdoor. Well, I guess Vive is known for its presentation. And of course, uh, you know, Stefana over the years has explored 
every possible way of presenting images inside, outside, on walls. I mean, whatever you can think of, he's probably done it. Uh, and that, of course, is one of the attractive things about Vive and made it, uh, it's one of the sort of things that people really know about this festival. And the ingenuity of how to present pictures is always to be found here, probably more than any other festival on but, the planet. But you, Martin, because you had many, many shows in museums, uh, so what is, what, what is your experience now being outdoor, being shown outdoor, oh, and, like uh, and having all these people looking at that? Of course, I mean, it's a great privilege. Yeah, I mean, I love having pictures that are accessible. You know, I try and make pictures that are very entertaining. Uh, but, you know, beyond that entertainment, there is some kind of serious message if you want to sort of focus in on it. But uh, I think of a priority as A, to make it accessible and B, to make it entertaining. So this fits the bill very well to have it out in the street just by the station. We couldn't have got a better site, could we? Yeah, I was actually saying when, when Stefano called us and said it was, you know, right in front of the station, I said that's the perfect place. Mm -hmm. I think that's where you want it to have it. I mean, in terms of the, for my work, I can only speak, is that the accessibility of, of, of photography for me is... is really uh, uh, a prime factor for what I do. I really, the people I'm, I'm interested in, in talking to is those people in the street, those people that are interesting, the people in the photo world, that's something else. But what I really want is, is, is that reaction from people. I, mean, I think the images I'm showing, family photos, they all have them. So we they, all have that. Yeah, we all have that. And a, a lot of photography, stop, most photographers, or anyone who's had a camera in their hands, the first photos they take are of their family. So in the end, everyone has that connection to family photography. And I, you know, I think it, you know, everyone can look at a lot of the images, but especially in my collection, and obviously their family portraits of birthdays and whatever it be, and holidays, those are, everyone's had have those images. So, you know, I feel that connection. I think it's important. But, it, you know, like, like you said, I think it's great to have uh, exhibitions uh, outdoors as well. I think it's accessible, but I think people, I think even museums can be quite accessible these days, depending on how museums are. Yeah, some museums are much more accessible than others than other museums. So, Well, it's still a decision because you have yeah. to make a decision to go and visit an exhibition. Sure. So it's not like yeah. you are walking in the street and suddenly yeah. you have something, you know, coming yeah. But it's, I see people who walk and they look down at their feet, and I don't. And, 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 and oh, they look at their phones. To be honest, they look at their phones a lot more yeah. than anything else these days. Okay, we have so to think, fight again. So we then. do have to fight a little bit harder. So I've actually seen stuff in the streets getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. But um, like you say, you know, we're fighting advertising. We're fighting other, so much visual medium. Uh, phones. Visual propaganda. Well. Yeah, visual propaganda. So it, you know, it's you do have to shout a little bit louder. So I have another question about all this, you know, uh, flux of images we are surrounded about you because you both of you collect books or images, uh, huge collections of images. Um, is it a kind of daily thing for you to have a relationship with other images, not your own images, but all these images? Is it something that is important in your daily life? Or Do you mean to collaborate? To collect, to, to, collect mm -hmm. to, to look at it's these obsession. images. Uh, uh, obsessional. Uh, uh, absolutely, I think it's complete. I, people s say the word obsessional like it's a bad thing. I, I think it's a great thing. So I, think it's it's, a, I think it's to be obsessional is a good point. I think you should be obsessional. If you're an artist. For you, it's the, part of uh, every part, day. Everything I've ever done, I'm slightly obsessional. I mean, it's probably a nightmare for my wife. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but uh, you know, in, or, but I think people who are passionate are obsessional people. I think that's, uh, mm -hmm. that goes hand in hand with passion, I think, generally. So Martin, what about you? Has this obsession, is it also there? Of has course, it, Has yes. it changed over the time? Or? Uh, no, it's pretty consistent really. I mean, um, I'm always interested in trying to understand my relationship to the world through photography. It's my main aim. And one of the benefits of that and the byproduct is to produce an archive about um, contemporary life. First off, I guess, in the UK, because I've done more photos there than probably anywhere else, and then the rest of the world. And then, you know, occasionally someone like Lee will come along with a perfect proposal of, you know, this exciting idea of combining the two archives together. And immediately that was offered to me, I, I jumped at it and said yes. For you, it's uh, interesting to revisit your own work as well. It is because I've got a lot of pictures, like on, on Magnum, I'll have over 50,000 high res images, all keyworded, all ready to be used. I've been through. So, yeah. Yeah. So it was a lot. So you revisit, or do you revisit Martin's work, or uh, do Well, he you made the selection in the first place, yeah. and then we tweaked it. But in the end, ultimately, it's down to Lee. You know, I can't sit here and yeah. and, and claim that it was my idea. He he did it all. I just uh, 
you know, I just jump on the back and you enjoy. You said yes, which is the best thing. Yeah. You only need one word. But it, 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 I went, what was great is that I went through Martin's work and obviously I discovered lots of images that I never knew from Martin's work, which is, I think there are, like you said, there's 50,000 images on the Magnum. Data, so thank God they're all keyworded because it was complicated. And this is something that we can access, right? I mean, it's, uh, uh, it's online. Totally can. No, I think you need professional accreditation uh, to get okay. the deepest archive. There's a sort of smaller archive that you can there's get as a member a, of the public. still a lot of images. Yes, a yeah. lot of images, yeah. I have a final question for both of you. So we are here in this uh, hotel and they have a beautiful restaurant. And tonight uh, you can invite someone for dinner uh, for a tete-a-tete -tete conversation, nice dinner in this beautiful uh, surrounding. So who would that be? Would wow. I mean, you could decide about someone who is, you know, living or a celebrity oh, or dead completely dead unknown. Who would be your guest tonight? Martin. Uh, well, I mean, first off, I'd have, uh, I suppose if I had a photographer, it would be um, Tony Ray Jones, who is oh. one of my photographic heroes who I never met and whose work I've followed very closely and has been a great inspiration to me. And from a living person, it would be someone called R Rory Stewart, who you won't know. He's a sort of British politician. Politician? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because he's very interesting. Lee? Wow, that's a, it's a, it's a difficult one, that. Um, I think I would love to, uh, in, as a filmmaker, um, there are so many films I love, but Orson Welles is someone I would have loved to have spoken to because mm -hmm. uh, the reason I really love to have spoken to him because he, he's been like, everyone says, he, he didn't make many films. He made very, very few films in the end. But I would love to speak to him in, 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 and have that discussion and I kind of someone who really influenced a lot of the way uh, I, I saw work. I thought his, his obsession with making films was something pretty extraordinary. Uh, Stanley Kubrick as well, someone who I, I really admire in that world. In photography, in, in the photography world, it, it's complicated because I'm kind of sitting next to someone, I kind of veneered, when I, was, when I was at film school and I was kind of like obsessional, it was slightly about Martin's work. Uh, so here you are. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, are you going to buy dinner tonight? <laughs> uh, wait, it, uh, Is that the idea? Are you going to buy dinner tonight? I thought you had to invite me for dinner. I thought that, I didn't get the idea. Okay. No, I think uh, we go on the tab of uh, Musée de Lise. Yeah. Okay, Thank you, Natalie, you Thank for, uh, you. <laughs> for the dinner tonight. We're looking forward to it. <laughs> Send the bill. Yeah. No, but I, I had, his, had the last resort um, as the first one of the first, but, and I thumbed it so much. I told Martin this, it fell apart. I couldn't actually put it together in the end, so it was one of the books that really did influence a lot of me, which is why it's amazing to be doing this project together. Nice. Thank you. That's okay. it. We are Brilliant. done. <laughs> good. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Pleasure. That was 13 minutes, though. So. Oh, you have a good sense of time. <laughs> it's better than Swiss, is it? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Swiss Rome. Yes. I'm, I'm we down don't here. have a Swiss watch. Of you know yeah. his watch? It's this iconic watch mm -hmm. in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. I know, yeah. He's got a great collection of watches. <laughs> <laughs>